Okay, so now the paper presentation is trying to give some more diverse foci and provocations for our thinking across the day. They're not trying to do that broad stretch. They're mostly, in some cases, at least leaning more upon projects. And in my focus, I'm going to um, be both doing this piece and then chairing the next piece before we move on. So what I'm uh, drawing upon here uh, is a, a six-year, almost seamless six-year EU-funded work into early years science and creativity that I started with Anna Craft and Jim Clack and I'm continuing now with Tatiana. The first project, Creative Little Scientists, was nine European partners, uh, 211 to 214. The second was, is, uh, still is, um, four European partners. Uh, and the only other colleague from the England is from the Institute of Education, the brilliant Esme Glauert, if any of you know her, who's an early years science specialist. Uh, so my intention in this kind of uh, piece is to raise some of the issues that looking across six years, working with European partners, some of the insights and the way we've built working together in order to try and um, explore some of the um, innovations that weren't necessarily planned, but have emerged, as it were. And I don't say claim that they're brilliant or world-shattering at all, but they are the ways things have moved forward for us. In terms of the original uh, creative little scientist research, the key drivers, and I'm sure you'll recognize those in much of your own research, we made the argument to the EU and uh, Framework 7 uh, funding to get this very big nine um, study, nine partner study uh, going, that some of the issues around changing perspectives on childhood, the development of the child, um, economic arguments were some of the drivers that enabled us to get the finance to explore uh, the next steps. Um, interestingly, uh, we also um, highlighted within that the whole notion of uh, the positioning of practitioners. <coughs> Uh, and in terms of the CLS work, and indeed in the um, creativity and early years science education, our follow-on, which is the Erasmus Plus uh, project, uh, where we're trying to instantiate how what we understood in the first research project, and then we're turning it into a more of an impact development work uh, in the second, uh, we've begun to explore how are we and were we in the project, let alone the policies, uh, and indeed schools in these different contexts, positioning the practitioners who we work with. And part of what I want to highlight then in this um, uh, presentation is that kind of positioning uh, to try and help those practitioners move beyond the rhetoric of creativity, which we found in many policy documents, but not the reality in classrooms necessarily, as which we all recognize clearly. Um, so if we move to that practitioner positioning in CLS, in the first one, um, practitioners were seen within that project, arguably, although we didn't discuss this at the time, but this was how we kind of, you know, emerged, as exemplars. We, we worked to find case studies in, nine, um, in the nine partner countries uh, of good practice in earlier science and indeed in mathematics as it was then. The keys has become just science. Uh, we undertook field work in those classrooms, not only, other work, and nominally we called them co-participants, but I think it was pretty much on paper rather than in reality. Yeah? And we did reject some schools in quotes because we went to visit schools and said, is this the kind of practice where, you know, we're only observing for a day, and what's the school focus on, and what's the school's interest, and so on. I mean, so some schools, for example, I was in Northern Ireland, we visited five, and we only selected one in the end. So we were looking to develop to develop relationships where um, exemplary practice we perceived as we might think of it was going on. Uh, we offered them the executive summary of what we realized at the end of CLS was frankly unrealized potential of creativity. So we had lots of documentation um, of, create, of um, science education happening in the early years where the teacher wasn't aware that the children took this next creative step or the children didn't take this create next creative step, although it was, it was right for it but somehow we then all cleared up or something else happened. Does that make sense? Or the children held themselves back because they weren't expecting, you know, et cetera. Indoors, outdoors, a whole wide range of different contexts. In Keys, therefore, we reviewed how we were going to plan to bid for uh, Erasmus Plus money to involve the practitioners differently. We tried to see them as co-designers, to give them a key role within this work in terms of documenting their own pedagogy. Totally different group of um, practitioners, it might be pointed out, and then gave them opportunity through the summer school in Athens and other uh, contexts um, to share the research that they were doing as action researchers rather than that we were doing on them. Uh, Okay, so in the first project in uh, Creative Earliest Scientists, 
it's quite a little scientist, sorry to get the old terminology wrong, um, we began to explore through the conceptual framework some of the synergies that we could see as researchers from having done a massive review of uh, mathematics, a massive review of uh, <coughs> science, a massive review of creative uh, practitioners' work in the early years, what were some of the synergies between IBSI uh, and um, uh, creative approaches? Uh, these were those that we came up with, play and exploration, most of them won't surprise you, uh, dialogue and collaboration. Uh, so we could see that there were synergistic relationships in relation to pedagogic practice between these strands in both science and in many papers that focus not on science but focus on creative practice uh, in the early years. Uh, and a reflection and reasoning, uh, and then there's a key role for teacher scaffolding and involvement, and indeed um, a key role for assessment and learning. So in the first project, developing our conceptual understandings, we then took that package and said, right, can we see some of this happening? If we believe that dialogue and collaboration is a key synergy between the science and the um, IBSI, uh, inquiry-based science education, and creative approaches, do we see that in classrooms? And so we took those lenses as researchers into the classroom to see, are we seeing examples of this? As well? And then we categorized our understandings based on those synergies. We also came up with, as a consequence of that first um, uh, conceptual examination, a definition of creativity in science, looking at, and indeed in science and mathematics, looking at generating ideas and strategies as an individual or as a community, reasoning critically between these and producing plausible explanations and strategies consistent with the available evidence. My goodness, it was a demanding task, with a small group of us being profiling the creativity and a very much larger group profiling the science, and we're right across uh, you know, Europe in terms of different partnerships and then debating it and presenting it in uh, a conference in Athens and then having it scrutinized and pulling it apart again for the 11th time and then finding another key word. But anyway, that's what we then lived with as a kind of journey to take that conceptual frame uh, into the new... Um, um, keys. Just to give you a kind of quick window on the methodology of both, it was much more than field work in uh, Creative Little Scientists. We did do the field work, as you can see over there, but we also developed some comparative <coughs> reports. Indeed, the person who designed this uh, visual is in the room. Thank you. Um, many years ago now. Um, and then we did online focus groups, we did uh, policy examinations, we did comparative <coughs> studies of policy across countries and so on. Um, so, and with an aim of understanding more about teacher education and initial teacher education. The methodology in Keys has been holistically different. We've got the same underpinning tenets, but we're now saying we pass this over to the teachers and we want to develop a kind of action research model, which I'd developed based on many other people's, but for a, a Teachers as Readers project. And we ask the teachers themselves to then begin to explore their own action research cycles over an extended period of time using the synergies from CLS. Um, so whilst keys, sorry, the first project had been qualitative and quantitative, as so well, mixed methods, the second project has been substantially um, about giving the teachers the space to be the generators of new understanding, <coughs> generating theory in the context of their classroom and us documenting it. We've given them portfolios, they're documenting their own learning and the young people's learning, and we looked at the processes and principles involved in action research. Just to give you a tiny window, we won't, whoops, what happened there? We won't be able to um, see them all. Let me just go back a couple, here we go. So these are a couple, just a kind of window of reality. This was us. This was a bunch of researchers trying to document what teachers are doing and then share it. So, of course, we've got our own lenses, and we had issues around Siraj Blackford's um, pedagogical framing, pedagogical interactions, our kind of inter our understanding, our conceptualization of what was going on in this particular instance uh, in Northern Ireland, and then our continuing documentation of the opportunities for creativity within that, and the, uh, in this case, generating ideas and strategies um, that the young people were involved in. Now you move on three years and we're saying let's move it away from us as the understanders and enable the teachers to position themselves as taking the next step, the practitioners themselves. And I'm now turning to a colleague, Heather Shan, who works at the Annan School in East Sussex, a Froebel School, and this is her presentation, or a tiny touch of it, because there were 19 slides, that she presented to other colleagues 
uh, across Europe in Athens at the summer school. But this is entirely made by Heather with some structuring from us. So you can see over here, Heather's highlighting that she's focusing on the dialogue and collaboration synergy and these particular dispositions about working together, developing thinking skills, opportunities to talk. So we've got from our conceptual frame to her in action. She's got two action research cycles in effect. The first one was how can I increase the number of children taking the initiative, which was the kind of autumn term in science learning. And then the second was how can I increase children's ability to make connections and develop creative thinking skills in science through profiling, dialogue and collaborative working. So in the first project, we were really looking at what one might call snapshots because we had so much time, so little time. Okay, to, um, sorry, Pans just waved at me. That was my reaction. Um, so a little time to see it. In the second project, we've given all the time to the teachers. So in effect, they've planned the whole year, two, three action research cycles and taken a journey. So here's a little bit more of Heather's. And moving to the last slide of Heather's, here's her provocation to the profession and to us as researchers saying, uh, in what ways might you, do you capture and record the essence of children's creative thinking? So she's been on a journey, and now she's pushing the learning out to others, as indeed others are within the project. So my, our expectation is to produce masses of training model, modules around creativity uh, and science education. But in terms of the innovative features, having done that quick presentation, I'm arguing that the empirical evidence uh, gathered over scale and over six years is quite substantial, really and a big, big shift in the researcher-led fieldwork to teacher-led creativity research, which is about ownership. Who owns this creative development then? Is it about me documenting it? Surely it shouldn't be, and should be some kind of partnership. These European teachers have been positioned as co-designers. We're now calling them keys ambassadors. How we then realize their ambassadorial role is a very great challenge, given the current context and schools uh, uh, positioning of. And we've begun to develop a discourse um, for common discourse for creativity in early years science, which we hope we'll be able to share across um, uh, different ITE institutions across Europe and develop that kind of sustained and creative journey of R&D in um, creativity in early years science. I hope that gives you a kind of a flavor of a picture. Interestingly, we were selected under CLS as a case study for the European uh, Commission for what we've done under CLS. So let's hope they select us as a case study again for the next stage where we've passed it away and haven't held on to it so tightly. Okay? Thank you.